If anyone ever needed to ask what makes Andrew a happy boy, you'd need to look no further than a Beretta 92. And Umrex have just thrown a spanner in the works by bringing out a further three options to tempt me with. <laughs> and welcome to AAR on Air. Today it's a quick look at the latest release from Umarex and it's right up my street. You know air pistols can cover off a multitude of categories including pure unashamed target tools, tin can busters, close quarter pest control and lots more. But my personal favourite is the replica collectible pistol. We all have our favourites, from our childhood maybe, from the latest game or films. Whatever it may be, I for one am so pleased there are companies out there who are taking the time to produce these. And one of the companies who do this so well has to be Umarex and one of my personal favourites, the Beretta 92. Well... They're adding three more 92 M9A3s to their range to help build the collection. <laughs> oh, let's take a closer look, shall we? These are the BB firing version, which means you get that blowback action, dropout magazine, and more of the real feel than you do from the eight round rotary magazine pellet firer that tops their range and takes pride in place framed on my wall. I realise I have a huge soft spot for the 92s and when the FDE M9A3 first came out I was smitten from the start. Well, the new ones are available in this Inox or Silver and Black. There will be a SEAL version which is more black and grey and a military green finish which is darker than the previous FDE version that came out originally in polymer slide, which later became the full metal, hence the FM in the title on the boxes. The only thing that is not metal is the contrasting coloured grips. Each one of these is 226 millimetres or 8.9 inches long and tips the scales at 1080 grams or just under 2.4 pounds in weight. It's worth mentioning at this weight it does feel very much like the real deal and is a satisfying handful. The two-tone finish does add another level to them and gives them a distinctive finish. The main body carries the main colour with the barrel, safety, slide release, mag release, grips, etc. in the contrasting colour. The only issue with this can be the blowback action may rub slightly on the barrel and give it more of a distressed look over time, which, if it is a tool you will be using and enjoying, will add a level of authenticity to it. And if you're looking to keep any of these as a showpiece, then it's unlikely to be an issue if it's not used regularly. The sights are open and fixed, front and rear, with white dots to aid sighting. There is, however, a rail on the underside to add, such as a laser, if you prefer. Looking at this in greater detail, there is the dual-sided safety on the rear, allowing you to operate this from either side, and can be done with your thumb, if you prefer. Down puts you in safe, and forward or up reveals the red dot and puts you into fire. There is the ability to field strip these if you wish and this is one of the easiest actions of a lot of pistols that I've used. First, remove the magazine via the mag release button on the grip. Then simply press the button on the right hand side, hold in place and turn the release cam on the left hand side. Then slide the top forward, it's off. To drop it back into place, simply locate the slide on the rail carefully, then with a little confident force, push back until you see the cam lock back into place. 
This will have set the hammer. So you need to decock the pistol and then return the magazine. Easy. Then it's time to take a quick look at that magazine. It is a nice solid thing and holds the BBs and the 12 gram CO2. To load the 12 gram CO2, unscrew the bottom using the supplied hex key. Drop in your 12 gram CO2. Ideally with a drop of silicon oil first to help prolong the life of your pistol. Then return the threaded nut, being careful to ensure you don't line it up with the angle bottom, but you line it up with the threads themselves. I've seen many a magazine ruined by not doing it correctly. They're also not a cheap item, so it's worth looking after them. Tighten just enough to know you've pierced the CO2 and sealed it in the magazine. At this point, you can then load up with the BBs of your choice. There is a difference of reported stats at this point around the number of shots this will hold. The box it comes in states 18 rounds. The spare magazine packs state 16 rounds. So at this point, it was worth manually checking this out. And from our results, it will indeed take 18 rounds. Just, I would say it would be more comfortable and less likely for a possible jam if you stuck 16 rounds in instead of the full 18. So, either is correct, but perhaps 16 would be my preference. They are loaded up by pulling down on the spring. This is the way you lose your nails, and I haven't got many, I'm afraid. So, pull it. All the way down, that's it, put it all the way down, and then it locks into place, allowing you to drop all those BBs into the magazine through the cutout hole. So, when you've got it all full, then simply release the spring back and you're loaded up. Let's get this over the chronograph, shall we? Firstly, using standard steel BBs, which are 5.37 grain, and it saw 345 feet per second, which is 1.42 foot-pounds, or 1.92 joules. I thought I would then get out the old favourites of mine, the lightweight 4.5 millimetre blasters, that are only two grains, and bound to get the FPS figures up. But with these on board, it saw 502 feet per second, but it's still only 1.12 foot-pounds or 1.52 joules. These results show that they are not pest control pistols. They are firmly in the replica and plinking category. With the plastic blasters on board, they can comfortably be used indoors, say in your garage or outbuildings in the wintertime. And even though faster, are less likely to do any damage. At this point, I thought I would try out the old Dust Devils to give it an opportunity of lead-free and frangibility, if there is such a word, to prevent ricocheting. They tipped the scales at 4.35 grains and it saw 372 feet per second, which is 1.34 foot-pounds or 1.81 joules. The real takeaway is they do work in the pistol and are not only that, but they're a little bit faster. They will also simply disintegrate on impact rather than risk flying off everywhere and causing potential ricochet issues. So far, everything is ticking all the right boxes. Time to get this out on the range and test it for accuracy. Of course, let's not run away with the idea that this is aimed at being some sort of purebred target pistol. More the plinking variety. So here goes, out at around 10 metres. It's a Beretta, 92. So what's not to like about it? Certainly as far as I'm concerned. It is a nice sunny day, the sun's coming very low, it's early in the morning, I want to get this done. And shooting out at 10 metres, usual range. It is breezy, it's probably not showing it that well, but it is really quite breezy and it's coming in at some pace from time to time. I wanted to show you all three 
different types of pellets, pellets, sorry, BBs. The steel, the dust devils, and the plastic ones. The plastic ones would be a complete waste of time on a breezy, windy day like this. So ideally they're for indoors, or basically just because you're trying to get the feet second up, which they will very easily do. So, without further ado, because the wind's going up even more, I've not put any lasers on it, straightforward. I do like these, always have. Let's try it and see how well we can do out at 10 metres, shall we? Just as the wind decides to come quite strong. Still BBs. To be honest, I don't think that's bad. The first ones were just trying to get my aiming point right, uh, because this is straight off, straight out of the box, using it. So I don't think that's too bad at all for 10 metres on a pistol, just resting on the uh, Rockstad tripod. I do like them, I like them a lot. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try it with the frangible dust devils, because they're a little bit heavier, see how we go with that. Dust devils! I always like the idea of dust devils, but not all guns like them. Oh, wind again, but we'll give it a go. Chance thought it's going to change the aim point. Oh, come on. open after the last shot, that's empty. Now the irony of this, if we hadn't got the wind which is causing them to throw around a little bit, in a calm moment they're probably more accurate with the dust devils than it has been with the the normal steel BBs. You've got quite a lot in the centre point, in the 10 point. I think that's pretty good. It's just such a shame about the wind. Not even going to try the plastic ones, but take my word for it, indoors they're really, really good. So, Beretta 92. Yes, please. <laughs> Back to the studio. Well, I think that's pretty concise and a good example. Well, open sights as well, with no laser or anything to help, pretty good results. And more than accurate enough for its intended purpose. In summary, I would say it is up to Umarex's high quality and standards. It has a terrific feel to it. It's not overly priced at around £200 UK. They are available in enough options to suit most people. They shoot all different types of ammo with no issues that I've found. The blowback action with lock open after last shot is pretty strong, giving even more realism. They do have a threaded barrel for you to be able to add a silencer. But this is likely to be an airsoft type silencer 
and is a left-handed thread, which normally means not a lot of actual silencing going off. But it adds a certain look to it. Be warned, it will obscure your sights when fitted. I suppose it's pointless asking me if I like it, because it's a Beretta 92, and that's pretty much a given. That said, if it was a bad version, I would say so. But this is a top draw version, and yes, I love it. That's it. That's three new M9A3s coming out for you. Hopefully you've enjoyed this quick review. If so, please give us the old thumbs up. Don't forget to take the time to subscribe, share if you wish, click the old alarm notification bell. There are lots of platforms to check out and of course the AAR website and merch and much, much more. A big thank you to the boys and girls at Vector Air for getting hold of these and getting them in stock early. And for all their usual help. I would like to break the mould a little by saying a quick thank you to Rodney and the amazing Danny John Jules. Yes, the Danny John Jules. That's it from me for this week. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.